doing a speech, and you're working on it, as some people already here know, you've got to kind of work it out and focus on it and really get into, get in your head and really kind of focus on your speech. And Rajiv knows all about that, right, Rajiv? You just you kind of get in the head and you start thinking, okay, what am I going to do for this speech? How am I going to do it? That's the big challenge of every, every speech creator out there. How do you do that? How do you make that thing? So that's what happened to me. I went to Toastmasters. I started getting get into my head and thinking exactly what am I going to do this speech, how am I going to make this work, how am I going to get everything all put together, how am I going to get everything fine, how am I going to become a legend in my own mind. That was the goal. Just get everything all straight and all together. Well, the thing on Toastmasters, as you'll see in a little bit, is you give a speech first, and then afterwards you get an evaluation. So I got this speech together. Perfect speech. Figuring out everything exactly where it was going to go, and then I gave the speech, and then afterwards, I got a comment. Or an evaluator. Kind of a big guy. And he had a very strong kind of way of talking. It was like, well, Tim, your speech is okay, but uh, it needs more vocal variety. <laughs> and you need to move around on stage a little bit more, and, and you need to be authentic. I don't know about you, but that's sort of, I'm not quite sure exactly what it is, but I was going to figure it out. You know, so the thing about Toastmasters is every project you have, you've got a new technique to work on, a new speech technique. We talked about this earlier. So they're okay, new speech, new technique, new speech, right? New speech. But new speech, but I got to be, have vocal variety, move around on stage more, and be authentic. So I started thinking, how do you do that? How do you get vocal variety, moving around on stage, and being authentic? And then it occurred to me that maybe, maybe what you really <coughs> want to have is a kind of a drunken southerner. Because that would have, have the accent and, uh, and have the moving around on stage and it'd be you know, authentic to people from the south. So I thought, and you look at me like, how did you ever think this was a good idea? Well, you, when you get a little desperate after a while when you're trying to figure out your speech, you start thinking, thinking in your head. So I started giving the speech, sort of like a drunken foghorn leghorn. So I well, I say, I say, Senator, here I am. I just can't quite keep my feet up here and staggering all over the stage. And I'm thinking, ha, I nailed it. I full of variety, authentic, and I was moving around on stage. <laughs> and another person came up after that thinner person. Quieter talking, very polite. To Tim, um, you know, it occurs to me that maybe there's such a thing as too much vocal variety, too much stage movement. And I don't know what that was, but the authentic, I wouldn't call it authentic. It just wasn't real. I didn't get it. I didn't believe it. I didn't understand it. So I thought, OK, all right, I can handle this. I can do this. I got my feedback first. I still need vocal variety. I need to move around the stage more. I need authentic, but I can't be a drunken uh, Senator Leghorn. That's just not going to work. So I said, OK, all right, what am I going to do? OK, hey, you know how that is. You think about things. OK, so my third speech, working on the third speech. And I don't remember exactly what I did for the speech, but I do remember the comments the evaluator had. There were three of them. One of them was, you need more vocal variety. Another was, you need to move around the stage more. And finally, you need to be more authentic. You ever have one of those moments where you just give up? Three speeches, three problems, I couldn't solve one of them. <laughs> Just complete and total waste of time. So I did what everybody should do if they want to become a better speaker. That's right. Stop speaking. <laughs> Put that. Quit. Shut down. That's it. I'm done. This is a waste of my time. I'm not going to do this anymore. And after a couple of weeks, uh, the leader then of our club, Rocky Romero, came over. He's a medium tall guy, a nice guy, uh, but really knows his stuff about speaking. He said, Tim, uh, you're not speaking anymore in, in, out there. He says, yeah, well, Rocky, I am not improving. I'm not getting better. I keep on having the same problems over and over again. He says, well, Tim, you keep doing different speeches each time. I said, well, yeah, Rocky, isn't that the way you're supposed to do it? I said, no, no, Tim, if you want to be better, you've got to re-speak your speech. And then he started explaining it to me. If you really want to become a better speaker, the secret is not to just do one speech and then a different speech and a different speech and a different speech. You do one speech because what happens if you do a series of different speeches is you do one speech, OK. You get feedback on that speech. You do a new speech. The feedback has nothing to do with the speech. The speech, the feedback, it's over. It's done. You're doing a new speech. You don't improve. 
But if you do the same speech over and over and over and over, and as David would say, and over 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 and over, I have this a few times. You build, develop, and grow your speaking skills. So all of a sudden, you have a speech up there that just gets better and better. So I started doing it. Started re-speaking and re-speaking and re-speaking. Because that's where it's going to become better. And more conversational and more involve the audience and pull people in and have a good time up here and help the audience to come along. It's sort of like, it's like in sports, it's like passing drills. If you're a football player, you go out there, you do passing drills every day, you start passing the ball and passing the ball. Not because you love passing drills, but because I do the same thing over and over, you become better at it. Right? Make sense? So if you really want to become a better speaker, you re-speak. Once isn't enough. You used to do it once, and then you do it again, and then you do it again. And when you start to do that, you'll notice the first time you're okay. The next time you're a little bit better. And the next one a little bit better. And as you continue to do it, you get more conversational. You bring people in. You get more energy, more excitement. You build and develop and grow your skills. And you take yourself to a whole new level just by re-speaking. So if you really do want to become a better speaker, join this club, of course. But in addition to that, make sure you remember that speaking is re-speaking. 